Hi guys, my name is Chad Trofgerben, and this is your tutorial for the week. Today, we're going to take the character that we've been working on and bring him into Anime Studio Pro 11. Now, Anime Studio Pro 11 is actually a version under the current one, which is called Moho Pro 12. However, unfortunately, the software no longer works for me. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, it just becomes more and more corrupt as I use it. I've been uninstalling it, reinstalling it. I've been trying the latest beta versions. I've been doing all these things and it just, it, it falls apart. Like the software is just kind of like not working anymore. And so instead of battling it, I decided just to go back one version. It's essentially the same thing. If you're using Moho Pro 12 and if it works for you, that's awesome if it works for you, by the way, um, you can still do what I'm doing here. It's just I'm one version behind just for the sake of being able to get through this without the software crashing or whatever. So with that said, I'm going to jump in and start in Photoshop. We're going to merge all of our layers that need to be merged, and then we'll take it into Anime Studio Pro 11 so we can begin the process of rigging an image-based character. So here we are inside of Photoshop. This is the character I made last week. We got to this point, we added some shading. If I wanna use an image-based rig like this, it's best to take the shading and other attributes of the character and combine them. That way you don't have separate elements to worry about when animating out your bones. So the first thing I'll do is come in and determine what I want to combine. We have all these facial features, the mouth, we have the glasses and the nose. I want to take all those and combine them with the head. So I'm just going to drop all of these down to the head. So just like that. And then I'm going to click on the head, hold and shift and go all the way up to mouth. And now what I can do is right click and then choose merge layers. So now you have the head on one layer along with the shading. And I can come in and rename that to head and then hit enter. The next step is to combine all the other layers with their shading counterparts. So starting with front arm, I'm just going to select both of those layers and come down and merge them. And then we can rename that to f.arm. And if I were to hide this, you can see that the shading hides along with the arm, indicating that they are all on one layer. And we can keep doing this. So for the front leg, we will merge the layers, rename it to front leg, and then we have the body. Now, here's the thing with the body. In the previous video, I wanted the neck with the body, but I've actually changed my mind since then and want to separate out the neck from the body. And that's not a big deal. What we can do, just so we can see what we're doing, is hide the top layers so that the head is not blocking the neck come down to the body. We're going to take the lasso tool and come in and we're just going to cut out the neck as precisely as we can. So just kind of come up like that and come around and then use Command X or Control X if you're on Windows and then Command Shift V to paste in place on a new layer. You're going to do the same thing now for the shading. We're going to click on that body shading and just come in and grab that shading element, just like that, up like so. We're going to then cut it out, come down to where the neck is, Command Shift V to paste in place. We'll have to bring our opacity down just to ensure that all of that is matching. And then we can combine these two things. So let me hide the body shading and I can just make sure I'm looking at the neck. So we're going to combine layers one and two, select them both, and then choose merge layers. And I can name this one neck. And then you have the body. So we're going to bring the body shading down to the body. And then we're just going to combine all of those so that you have body set. And then we just have a few more. So we have the back leg and it's shading and then the back arm. So we're just going to come in and merge these layers. So merge your back leg so that it is set with its shading and then set your back arm as well. So come in and name it. There you go. So now you have the front leg, the front arm, the head, the neck is separate. Everything is looking good. 
there's a slight issue with the body and the neck. If I zoom in on this, you can see that there's that little gap. And that was just how I cut things out. To help with this, I'm just going to move the neck below the body. That kind of helps sure up that gap a little bit. And then zooming in with the neck layer still selected, we're going to take our brush and use the eyedropper to select the neck color of the shading. And then on the neck, we're just going to come in and just try to fill in that area without overlapping the other shadow. Just as best as you can. There we go. It might not be perfect, but it'll work for our purposes for right now. So now with that set, we can bring this rig inside of Anime Studio so we can begin the process of rigging. The first thing I want to do, of course, is ensure that we have a new file. I want to keep this original file intact because I will be coming back to this and doing more. I might create phonemes, I might do all sorts of different things, and it will be easier to work with if we don't have the shading layers attached. So let's create a separate file for this. We're just going to use Command Shift S, and I'll go into my new tutorial here, and we will save this as Old Man Shaded Merged.psd so that it is saved and good to go. Now we can go over to Anime Studio. I'm going to make a new file. And again, this will work in Moho, assuming Moho works for you. And I want to use Command Shift Y to import the character. So we have it right here. I'm going to click once and choose open. And here you'll have the option to do this individually with select layers or a composite. If you want certain layers excluded from this, you can choose select layers, but I want all the layers I made, so we'll choose individually, and it will separate out all the layers as images and bring it inside of Moho. So everything is organized just like it was in Photoshop. So from here, I'm going to come in now. We can reduce the size of the character so that it fits the screen. And if we were to animate this out, he would be within the boundaries of that screen. And we're going to begin rigging. First, we'll need a bone layer, so we can come over to this group layer that the old man is in, right-click, and then choose Convert to Bone. Then, we'll use the Add Bone tool. We're going to come in, and starting with the pelvis, we're just going to click and drag and go out to the right. Then, we're going to go from there and draw a bone up to around where the belt buckle is, so right about there. And then we can do one more that goes up to the neck. So something like that. Then you're going to attach some bones to the neck. So come in like that. Two bones so that the neck can bend. And then we're going to add a head bone. So we can come in now. And we could add the head bone right here if we wish to help it rotate from the neck. Now we'll come back and add our bones for the character. We can hold an alt and click on the top torso bone to select that so we can link it to the arm. That's important. And we're just going to come in now and click and drag and come down about like this and release. If we separated out our hands like we did the neck, we could create additional bones exclusively for the hands, but we're just doing a simple rig. So we're just going to bypass that part and include the hand with the second arm bone. So we'll come down and release. I can hide my body and then hold an alt and click on that top torso bone once again. Come in and we're going to draw out the bones now for the back arm. So just come down like this and release. Then we have the legs. So hold an alt on the pelvis to select that pelvis bone so it's linked to the legs. And then we can come in and we'll draw one bone down and then another. And again, if we had feet separated in layers, we could then add an additional third bone for the foot to add more movement to that. But again, we can get to that in time. We'll do a more advanced rig later on, possibly using vectors. So I'll be able to show you all that then. But we're going to go back and hold an alt and then click on that back leg and bring it down and then bring it down again. So there you go. The final step for all this is to link your bones to the pieces of the character. We'll start at the top of our layers panel, so that way nothing is forgotten, and we have the eyes. 
Now the eyes are just going to be layer bound as there's really nothing we need to do in terms of flexi binding when it comes to images. So with the eyes selected, we can click on bind layer and then click on the head bone to bind the eyes to the bone. So that means wherever that bone goes, the eyes will follow. The same for the head. Click on the head, bind the layer to the bone. Now this is where it gets a little bit different. So we're now on front arm. You can only do this type of rigging with images. We're going to select the select bone tool, select both pieces of the arm, the front arm, make sure front arm is selected on your layers panel, come up to bone, and then choose create smooth joint for bone pair. You can see this big circle now goes along with the arm, and that's good. Basically, this means that these two pieces have been joined to move this layer accordingly. And we're going to keep going now. We'll go down to the front leg. We're just going to do the same thing. Bone, create smooth joint for bone pair. You go to the body. We're going to use these two pieces of your torso. So bone, create smooth joint. You have your neck that we separated out. So we're just going to select both of those bones. Now here you have a problem because of the way the bones are set up. You can see that it's grayed out. And what this means is we just have to go in and try to organize the bones so that they're more connected to each other. It just depends. And there's sometimes a little bit of movement you have to do to get this to work. So we're just going to come in and try to adjust this as best as we can. So let me go back to that bone layer. We can try to move this bone so that it's more connected with this bone down here. And what I might end up actually doing here is moving this bone up just away from the torso bone a little bit. And then I can come in and try to just sort of reattach this so that it makes a little bit more sense. So we have that one right there. I can come up and try to reattach that and maybe make it a little bit more straight like that. And then we have our head bone, which I can come in then with the transform bone tool and just readjust like that. Come back and we can see if that worked now. Again, these are things you might have to play with a little bit in order to get it to work. But as you can see now, once I did that, we can now create that smooth joint for bone pair. Then we have the back leg. Create that smooth joint. And then we have the back arm. My final piece of advice is to come over here to the bone layer Click on your bone strengths option. Command A or Control A if you're on Windows to select all the bones, and then click and drag to the left to bring the bone influence down to zero. That way we don't have any bone influence interacting with anything else as we are trying to animate. So now I'm going to go to frame one just so I can add some animation. Make sure we have the bone layer selected. We'll click off so none of the bones themselves are selected. And then we're going to take the Manipulate Bones tool, or you can use the Transform Bone tool. It just depends on how you want to animate. And then we're going to come in and start moving things around. So I can click and drag on this arm. And as you can see, I can create this bend, and it works along with everything else. There might be a slight little problem with the sleeve. You can see right up there, the arm piece is kind of interacting with the sleeve. And what I could do is more layers. So I could actually put the collar on its own layer and then overlap the arm so that we don't have that issue. But for the most part, it is working. You can see that this arm works as well. And then we have the legs right down here. You can come in and you can move those. We could create, if you wanted, target bones so that we could anchor the character. And maybe that's something I'll do next week. We can use the pelvis bone to move the character around. We can use the neck to bend the neck up and down. And you can see here that when I do this, there is some issues with the neck. It's kind of just all over the place, but that's where your constraints come in handy. And again, maybe that's a separate video I'll do in the future here. So that way you understand how you can control that. And then you have the head itself, which can be moved as well. But even though it's not perfect, we've established a pretty workable rig within a pretty short amount of time. 
So you could come in and then make your adjustments. And then you have a character ready for animation and whatever project you want to use them for. And again, this is just one of several ways you can rig. Rigging with images is different compared to vectors. Arguably, you have much more control with vectors, but when you want to rig something quickly, you can do so with the smooth joint binding inside of Anime Studio or Moho. So you have a lot of options, and again, I plan to every week continue to explore those options. So by the time I'm done with this whole thing, you'll have multiple topics covering different subjects and different software, and you'll know how to rig, animate in different software, hopefully, if you follow along, and if I continue to, you know, actually record these. So with that said, I am done for today. I'm going to go and do Chad stuff. So thank you for watching and I will see you next week.